Welcome to Guitar Science. So today, we're gonna to take a look at this jazz caster body. And we're gonna try finishing it with wipe on poly. I've never used this stuff. The internet says wipe on poly is the easiest type of finish. So we're gonna to try to get a uniform thin coating. As you can see, it's already got some gray something over this. It basically feels like unfinished wood. It's not very much on here. We're gonna see if we can just put this over the top. To do this, we're gonna try using an old t-shirt see how that works, although we might switch to something else. And we're gonna do it in a well-ventilated area because, well, you really don't wanna inhale this stuff. All right, let's get to work. Okay, so we're just gonna cut a small swath of the T-shirt. We're gonna use that. If it gets saturated or starts to dry or something, maybe we'll cut another swatch out of the T-shirt. Um, now, I don't want any T-shirt fibers to end up in this thing, so I'm gonna try and avoid fraying it when I do this but this is a really cheap old t-shirt. So I'm just gonna put it. Again, I'm sure there's a proper way to do this. Maybe you should even wipe it on with your fingers, but that's what I've seen on the internet. I don't care, we're using a t-shirt, it will work. I'm gonna cut a few little squares so I don't have to stop in the middle and I can get an even coat. I think that's probably one of the keys is to not, not go over it when it's unevenly dry with an additional layer. I think that could cause it to not be even in the end. So I'm gonna to try to do each, each coat in a very short amount of time. And I guess I'll try two or three coats to start and we'll see if I need more or if that will be enough. I don't want a particularly thick coating. I just want enough that it looks and feels like wood that's actually been treated instead of just a hunk of roasted oil. It's open now. Don't want to leave it open for too much, too long. I guess I just kind of pour some on here and then wipe it on the guitar. We'll see. Trial and error here, hope for the best. Okay, that was not ideal. And try to get a uniform finish here. I should probably be wearing rubber gloves or something while I do this. Too late now. You want as thin a coating as possible. You don't want to get any streaks or anything like that, but that's a little hard to avoid. We're going to try to avoid getting the inside of the neck pocket, although it's not a big deal. Pick this up now and the back. Don't want to put the front down though, because you know, then you might screw up that coating that you just put on the front. Kind of gonna hold it here. Okay, that was not good. So far, I would say this is going pretty well. It's about what I expected. Consistency is good, it's easy to spread. It's really, it is wiping on quite well. It's not at all difficult to apply. It will have some tiny little particles in it from the cardboard. I guess that's my fault for using cardboard instead of something else. But I do think with three or four coats of this, it probably will be fine. I haven't really considered how I want it to dry. That's kind of a problem. What I don't want is for it to dry and one part of it to be stuck to the cardboard and never able to get that cardboard off because it's basically held on with polyurethane. So I've let that first coat dry. It's dried at the touch. It feels a little more smooth than it did before. It definitely needs at least one, possibly two, maybe even more coats than that. It's fairly uniform so far. 
you know, if you could find sand this down after a few more coats, I think it would, I think that'll do it. Okay, so now I'm going in for the second coat. I decided to put on gloves. That's definitely something you want to do. This stuff is not something you want to get on your hands. It's very hard to get off of your hands. So I recommend wearing gloves. Uh, the other thing you're going to notice here is that it dries really, really fast. In some cases, it almost dries so fast that you can kind of screw up your coat if you don't spread it around very quickly when you're doing this. So, uh, you know, time is of the essence when you're working on this. I actually decided to just apply two coats consecutively here because, the, frankly, the first coat was dry by the time uh, I had finished the backside. So I'm just doing two coats in a row right here, and uh, I'll just leave you with some time lapse for the rest of this. Okay, so after applying coats two and three, I've decided to progressively sand it with some micro mesh. Uh, I am dry sanding. I don't really do wet sanding. The, the, I don't know. I don't like the idea of wet sanding in wood. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure other people do it. Uh, it ain't for me. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm going to stick to easy stuff. So yeah, I'm going to dry sand this with progressively finer grits of micro mesh. Um, and, you know, I, I recommend doing this before and then again after every single coating that you're going to do. Uh, it's just probably a good idea. I think that's kind of how it's done by professionals. You do a lot of sanding when you're finishing guitars. Uh, it's not particularly an enjoyable part of the process, but it's something that you got to do to get a nice even coat and shine at the end. Okay, so I've progressive sanded up to 12,000, which is the highest that the micro mesh goes. And now it's incredibly smooth. I definitely should have done this before I started. I did get a little a few gouges in the wood from where I was placing it upside down. That's regrettable, but there's nothing I can do about that now. Uh, but it's definitely very smooth now, and I think if you were to do this before you applied the wipe-on poly, you could get a really nice even finish. I didn't do that, so we're going we're gonna to take what we can get here. I don't really care. I'm not going to be selling this guitar. I'm going to be playing it. But, you know, for the future, if you're trying to do this, you should probably do your progressive sanding before you do any layers, and then probably again after a few layers, and then probably again after another few layers. So, kind of screwed that up, but it is what it is, and frankly, it still looks good, and it's very, very smooth right now. So, I think it just needs a couple more layers, and then we'll do the same progressive sand again, and uh, probably that'll be it, or maybe one layer after that. We'll see. But that's the progress so far. Okay, so for this coat, I've actually decided that since it dries so quickly, uh, I'm going to spread it in with my fingers. Uh, you know, I am wearing those gloves. That probably doesn't help. probably spreads in easier with bare fingers, but I'm not willing to do that. But uh, you can see, you know, I, I pretty much just coated the entire thing in about 12 seconds or so. Uh, so what I decided to do for all the subsequent coats is just go over very quickly like that and then kind of touch it up. Uh, with a rag after if there's any spots that I missed, but I definitely feel like this gives me a more even coating and I'm able to apply it faster so that it doesn't dry before I get over the whole thing. As you can see, I'm barely able to come back over with the t-shirt scrap before it's already dried. It's causing some problems in terms of the evenness and the streaks and the layers that I'm applying. Okay, so I've progressive sanded once again after another layer. It's getting there. It feels good to the touch. It feels very smooth. It feels like there's a coating on it. But I do think it needs at least one more layer. So I'm going to go over with one more layer of poly, and then I'm going to progressive sand again down to at least uh, 6,000 micro mesh, but maybe further depending on my patience. Okay, one last thing to recommend here that I haven't said yet. After you do each round of sanding, there will be some fine polyurethane dust on your guitar. 
uh, you should probably get that off with a microfiber cloth before you put on the next coat. So that's just something that I think probably makes a fairly significant difference. So I would definitely recommend wiping it down after every round of sanding. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the wipe on poly finish that I did. It's not particularly difficult. It basically is just wipe it on. You just have to watch out for runs and letting it dry in one spot too quickly. Uh, so overall here, there ended up with seven coats of finish and four rounds of progressive sanding. I'd say the total time investment was somewhere between four and five hours. Does it look professional? No, it doesn't look professional. You can see there's some blemishes and stuff, but it's good enough for me, and certainly it's something that I would experiment with again in the future before I shell out hundreds of dollars to have a body finished for me.